Okay, this is going to be another super fast uh, demo for deploying an event sourcing solution um, to Azure using Cosmos DB and functions uh, with VS Code and Java. I'm going to assume that you've already watched my short video on um, deploying a function with Cosmos DB, um, a function trigger, um, and you've got to this point already because we're going to be carrying on from there. So what I've changed here in my code, of course, if you want an event sourcing solution, we want to move data from one point to another. So I've uh, got some uh, parameters for a target collection here. Um, and I've got some uh, code to instantiate a, um, um, a Cosmos DB client uh, uh, within the, the Java SDK. And then uh, I'm looping over the data that's coming in from the change feed and then writing that document uh, into uh, my target collection here, which I'm, I've called collection two. Um, so for, for making sure that you have the uh, Java SDK, you want, you're going to want to add the dependency into your uh, Maven file. And then um, you're going to want to save that. And then it's going to give you a, um, this warning and asking if you want to synchronize that with your um, uh, class file or your class path. Um, you might need to uh, close and open your code a few times before that reflects and you get rid of the red bars and everything. Um, uh, but then you should be good to go. So um, I'm not going to test this locally. Uh, just to show you, I've added the parameters in here and those will be picked up by the code here. Uh, but I'm not going to test that locally. We did that in the introductory demo. So I'm just going to go right ahead and deploy this to Azure. So if I go to my Azure tab here i've got my local project highlighted already here uh, and i'm just going to click on this deploy to function app icon here i'm going to select my subscription uh, i'm going to go for the quick start i encourage you to check out the advanced settings to see what other uh, parameters you can change but just uh, quickly i'm going to um, select this setting here and all that's going to do is ask me for a function name which I'm going to give it, and then I'm going to select the region, and then it's going to go ahead and deploy my function to Azure for me. Okay, so it looks like my function deployed here. Um, it may take your function longer to deploy to Azure. Of course, I'm working within the magic realm of YouTube videos here. Um, so if we look at my subscription pane here, you should see a lot of information about your uh, function that's been deployed to Azure. Of course, we recommend investigating the deployment and uh, pipeline, CICD and so on aspects as a best practice. This is really just a quick start demo. So if I go to Azure, I should be able to Go to my resource groups, and if I refresh on here, I should see a resource group called TVK function because that's what I specified. And if I go into that, I should see the resources I expect for a function. And if I go into this, uh, one thing that will not have been propagated is my local application settings. Uh, so I'm going to need to go in and add those here. Um, so I'm going to need to add some new application settings here. If I go back to my local app settings here. Uh, these are the things that I want to add: the Cosmos DB connection, the target URI URI connection, and the uh, target URI key. Let me just do this first one here. So you can watch me doing it and just grab the endpoint and I'm going to save that. I think I'm going to use the magic of YouTube just to do the other settings here. And hey presto, there we go. My target URI and my target URI key are there as well. I'm sure you didn't want to watch me do that. Also, let me just save those. It's going to restart my app as well. Okay, so with those saved and with my function app restarted, 
and listening to the change feed, what I expect to see here uh, is that if I create a um, document in my uh, source collection, that should get propagated to my target collection. So if I go into my database here, let me just click in here. Just to be clear, the reason why we uh, do this, of course, is because um, I have one collection here with a partition key of ID, and I have another collection with a partition key of user, and these are different partition key schemes with different, presumably, read and write requirements. It's quite common to pass data around in event sourcing scenarios for that reason, because uh, the data might be duplicated, but it might need a different read or write uh, requirement elsewhere, and that's generally why you push data around. Of course, this is a very contrived example, but it illustrates the point. So let me just uh, create an item in here. Let me put the ID in, uh, and I'm going to put uh, a user field, because that's the partition key of the uh, target collection. And so let me save this. And what I now expect to see is if I go in my collection two, if I refresh this, it should appear. And there we go. It's picked up the, uh, the change as we expect. And that's it.